Sunday, young teens. Do you know what's beside me? It's a famous Merlion. And I guess you already have the idea where I am. Welcome to the Lion City, Singapore. Today's gonna be an awesome day as we praise and worship our living God. So be excited to receive God's message for you through our SKL series, Bible story, and Power Verse. So come on, and let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day to worship and honor you. We pray that today we'll be able to learn and know more about you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, we've learned a story most of you have probably heard before. Maybe it was on a Sunday school, or in church, or at home with our parents. But most of you have heard of the story of Daniel in a lion's den. Do 
you've heard that he survived an entire night in a den of a hungry lions and was never eaten. Not even a scratch. You might have thought, wow, how did he do it? How did he survive a night with a lions? He probably had something like this. No, that would only make the lions mad. He probably survived that night by using something like this. No, guns weren't invented yet. I know, perhaps, he survived that night by using something like this. No, he didn't use any of that stuff to survive. What he did to survive that night started long before that night actually began. Daniel was a solid man of God who always did right. Daniel was a man of character. He built godly character and that helped him survive a night with the lions. How did he build that godly character? The same way you and I can. The Bible says that Daniel prayed three times a day giving thanks to his God. Prayer is one of the things in Daniel's life that helped him build godly character. Hi young teens, it's learning time again because it's our Bible story time. I am Kuya Phil, and join me as we continue in the book of Daniel, chapter 6. Daniel was a solid man of God who always did right. The king was very impressed by him, so he gave him special treatment. But the king's officials were very jealous of Daniel, so they came up with a plan to get him in trouble. They knew that in order for them to get him, they should set a trap having to do with Daniel's love and devotion to God. So you see, Daniel was a man of character. He would pray three times a day, giving thanks to God. The king's officials knew that Daniel was a man of prayer. So they told the king to make a law that no one was allowed to pray to anyone except the king. So the king thought, it's a great idea, so he did just that. The punishment for breaking this law was that the person would be thrown into the lion's den. The king's officials knew that Daniel would break this law, and they were right. When Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room. Why would Daniel break the king's law? Because he knew that although obeying the king was important, obeying God was even more important. When the king's officials arrived at Daniel's house, they found him praying and asking God for help. Daniel knew that he didn't have the strength to survive a night with the lions, so he was praying for God's help. Daniel was arrested and brought before the king. The king had no choice but to order Daniel thrown into the lion's den. And that's exactly what happened. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and a stone was rolled over the entrance locking him in. The Bible didn't tell us what exactly happened that night. We do not know exactly what Daniel did all night. But one thing is for sure, Daniel was depending on God for his rescue. The next morning, the king ran down and had the stone rolled away. He yelled out to Daniel, Daniel, was your God able to save you? Daniel answered, Long live the king! Wow! Daniel survived a night with the lions. God protected Daniel. So you see, if you depend on God, God will save you, God will protect you, God will rescue you. So let your faith be bigger than your fears. Young teens, I hope that you learned something from the story of Daniel. Pray that God will help you apply what you have learned. So. Till next time, 
See you! Hello once again, young teens! I hope that you had a very meaningful time learning from our Bible story earlier. And we shall now move to a very interesting and engaging activity. It's time for our family devotion. I will be asking for the participation of the parents or the guardians. To start, just download the file from the link provided in the caption above and start doing the activity and answering the questions honestly after this video. And this will also be a very great bonding time for the parents or guardians together with their young teens. So parents and guardians, please help your young teens make the most out of this family devotion time. And don't forget to pray for your young teens at the end of this activity. I hope you will have fun Fun, fun. God bless! Hi, we're back, and today we will be learning a verse from the Bible from Psalm 55 16. But I will call on God, and the Lord will rescue me. Come on, let's join. Let's put an action to it. Psalm 55, 16. But I'll call on God and the Lord will rescue me. <laughs> Come on, let's do it again. This is fun, right? Psalm 55, 16. But I will call on God and the Lord will rescue me. Psalm 55, 16. But I'll call on God and the Lord will rescue me. Psalm 55, 16 But I'll call on God and the Lord will rescue me. Yes, let's apply that in our lives that when we call on the Lord, He will rescue us. God is listening. The Bible is a collection of many books telling one unified story from beginning to end. But all those books were written in different literary styles. Yeah, think of it like walking into a bookstore where every aisle has a different kind of literature. There's history or poetry or nonfiction. And when you choose an aisle and pick up a book, you're going to have very different expectations, different things that you're looking for. Right, they're all literature, but they communicate in really different ways. Yes, and so the same thing is true for the Bible. If you don't pay attention to what style it's written in, you will miss out on the brilliance of each book. So what are the main types of literature in the Bible? Well, first and foremost is narrative. It makes up a whopping 43% of the Bible. After that is poetry, which is 33% of the Bible. And then there's what you could call prose discourse, which makes up the remaining 24%. Nearly half the Bible is narrative. Yes, and this is no accident. Stories are the most universal form of human communication. Our brains are actually hardwired to take in information through story. And stories are really enjoyable. Why is that? Well, stories train us to make sense of the seemingly random events that happen in life by taking those events and then putting them in a sequence. And then together you can start to see the meaning and purpose of it all. And what links this all together? Well, good stories always have a character who wants something. And then through these characters, an author can explore life's big questions like who are we or what's really important in life. And a good story always involves some kind of conflict some challenge to overcome, just like in our own lives. And that forces us to think about our own challenges, why there's so much pain or disappointment in the world, and then what can we do about it? And stories usually end with some kind of resolution, giving us hope for our own stories. Since these are Bible stories, are the characters showing me how I should live? Yeah, that's not quite the point. Most Bible characters are deeply flawed. You should not be like them. But we are supposed to see ourselves in them, which helps us then see our lives and failures from a new perspective. And without even realizing it, these stories will start to mess with you and change how you see the world and other people and yourself. Now, there are different types of narrative in the Bible. Yeah, there's historical narrative, but also narrative parables, short biographical narratives like the four gospels. We'll look at all these in later videos.
Okay, next up is poetry, which honestly, I don't read a lot of. Yeah, you're like most people. But one out of every three chapters in the Bible is poetry. Yeah, why so much poetry? Well, poems mainly speak through dense, creative language, linking together images to help us envision the world differently. Poems use lots of metaphor to evoke your emotions and your imagination. Lots of fancy language, but wouldn't it be easier just to tell me what I need to know? Well, think about it. In life, we tend to form mental ruts, and we think in these familiar, well-worn paths that are very hard to get out of through logic or reasoning. And what good poetry does is force you off the familiar path into new territory. Sneaky. And there's different types of poetry in the Bible. There's lots of types of songs or psalms. There's the reflective poetry of the wisdom books and then the passionate resistance poetry of the prophets. Okay, the last big literary type is called prose discourse and it makes up a quarter of the Bible. Yeah, these are speeches, letters, or essays. And the focus here is building a sequence of ideas or thoughts into one linear argument that requires a logical response. Like, hey, have you thought about this thing? You should also consider how it connects to this other thing. And if you do, then you will see that this is the result. And in light of that conclusion, therefore, you should probably stop doing that one thing so that this other thing will be the outcome. So you're persuading me with reason. Yeah, discourse forces you to think logically and consistently and then do something about it. Biblical discourse is found in law collections, in wisdom literature, and the letters written by the apostles. Okay, so each book of the Bible has one literary style. No, actually most books have a primary literary style, like narrative for example, but then embedded in the narrative you'll come across poems or parables or a collection of laws. Every biblical book is a unique combination of literary styles. And to read that book well, I need to be familiar with each literary type and how it works. Yeah, so you know what to pay attention to and what questions you should ask. But before we look at each type, there's one more unifying feature of biblical literature that's really important and really cool. And that's what we'll explore next. We can learn from Daniel that we should never be afraid to stand up for God because we know that he is able to rescue us. Can you say an amen to that? So come on teens, stand up and close this in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you because we learn a lot today that we should never be afraid to stand up for you because we know that you are able to rescue us. In Jesus' name, Amen. See you again next Sunday. Sai Shien!